Wow, happy hump day. Welcome to the replay. It's your girl, Dana Dane. Welcome to Come Chronicles of Mobile Evangelism. Today, I'm going to start with letting you all know that this channel comes to let you know that according to Proverbs 30, I mean 11, <laughs> According to Proverbs 11, verse 30, part B, he that one of souls is wise. So let's go to the word wise and look at the Strong's definition. He that one of souls is intelligent, skillful, cunning, subtle. Okay, shrewd, right, skillful. So this broadcast is designed for me to share with you uh, encounters that I've had in the area that I function, which is ride share with my customers who the Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, um, is given permission through my spirit and through my will being surrendered to him to actually engage folks in um, winning their souls to the kingdom. Be it me speak a word in season, be it me minister through prayer uh, for these souls. Sometimes I pray for people they don't even know they're being prayed for. I've had times where the Ruach of Dash has, I have a list of names of people that I pray over um, over the years of doing this. I still have their names in my Bible and I pray for them. Um, situations that they have shared with me. Um, but I want to start this broadcast off by saying that evangelism, once you have become a son of the Most High, evangelism is the mandate on your life above everything else is to win souls to the kingdom of the Most High. So today I want to start off with Psalms 25 because today is the 25th. And I think I shared prior to um, this broadcast that my dad gave me a nugget of wisdom years ago about how to, in my early days of getting to know the Most High through His Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, who the world has told us name is Jesus, um, that a good way to get into His Word was to read a Psalms, chapter of Psalms, and a chapter of Proverbs every day. There's 31 Proverbs, so that's easy. And Psalms is uh, 150. So, I mean, it's inexhaustible. So I um, want to read Psalms 25. This is a Psalm of David. Unto thee, O Yahuwah, do I lift up my soul. O my Alua, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Yahuwah. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the Alua of my salvation. Alua means creator. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Yahuwah, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Yahuwah. Good and upright is Yahuwah. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of Yahuwah are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. 
For thy name's sake. And there it is. For thy name's sake. Verse 11. O Yahuwah, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. I'm going to repeat that. Psalms 25, verse 11. For thy name's sake, O Yahuwah, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that fear Yahuwah? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of Yahuwah is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward Yahuwah, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Verse 16, turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many and they hate me with cruel hatred. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Yasharal, and I'm going to put my name in there. Redeem Dana, O Alua, out of all my troubles. And may the Father and a blessing to the reading of his faithful, holy, and righteous word. Let it be so. So today I want to share an uh, encounter I had with a gentleman yesterday. Um, Mr. B is who I'm going to call him. And it was a very long ride from one side of the city to the other. And we encountered some traffic on the beltway so there was a lengthy time and mr b um is a truck driver so i was picking him up from where he the company that he worked for and of course the conversation piece is the car and i thanked him and um as we were riding along, I noticed his accent, so I knew he wasn't from Baltimore, and he shared with me that he was from um, up north. I'll just say that. The city's up, up north, one of the cities up north. And how he had left his family up north and came here and married his wife and started sharing some things that he was currently dealing with, one of which was um homelessness they have been evicted um one was about sickness that his wife was having and the other was his concern for his daughter and the main thing was that he doesn't feel that he's equally yoked with this lady young lady that he married However, he doesn't want to break up the family unit. And so he went on to share how he has sacrificed so much and how he has um, allowed her to manage the finances, which as a result, she didn't pay the bills. And um, so now they're having to live with family and what have you. And so... Um, I shared with him how, you know, he's preaching to the choir. I've I've experienced um you know being evicted before and it's not a, a um a a bad uh, it's not a, a thing that anybody wants to go through. Um in fact I did not, I've never been evicted, but I've been threatened with eviction. Let me correct myself. I don't think I've ever been evicted. I've been threatened with eviction. And on one time I can recall uh, 
about to be being evicted, but left way before that time came. But nevertheless, I mean, life goes on. And what I had to encourage him was he, he because he, he said to me that ever since he married this young lady, that basically all hell had been breaking loose in his life. And I told him there is a, um, there is a scripture. Let's see if I can find it. There's a scripture that talks about what happens when a man and a woman come together. Um, when a man and woman come together in holy ma matrimony, what happens? Let me see if I can can find it. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, it's in Ephesians, this particular verse is in Ephesians chapter 5 at verse 33, and I believe that there's more concerning it, but it says, and I, this is where I encouraged him, it says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. And so, where was it? But there's a scripture that says, that when you marry, trouble comes. And so I was telling him that, you know, the key is that um, prayer and intercession has to be done in order to mitigate or extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy because marriage is of the most high. And that's why the enemy has perverted it as, as such. And um, I know you can't help who you love before I get that. But the intention of marriage was from an institution of a ma male and female. Okay. And so as a result, the world has polluted it. Because same sex anything in terms of covenant is not of the most high so um the gentleman was very ambitious and he basically is torn between what to do about the circumstances surrounding the challenges that he is facing as far as keeping a uh, shelter over his head um showing up and being the father that he needs to be to his children that he had with her and the children that she had prior to them coming together. And so um, the one thing that I really respected about him is that he was talking about the decisions. But the, un the one element that this young man was missing is that he told me that he was relying on what his horoscope had said the other day and even pulled it up and read it to me. And I thought about him this morning when I read this scripture. You know, this, this passage of scripture, this whole chapter of Psalms 25, the horoscopes can't save your soul. And just look at the think about the name horror scopes. The scope of horror in your life. Because it's not of the most high. It is of Hasatan, the Satan, the adversary. And so we have to be careful 
of the counsel that we receive that the world wants to give us. Because the enemy is after one thing in your life. And that is what you say you believe. And so... <laughs> I'll just end with verse 14 of Psalms 25. The secret of Yahuwah, who is Lord, is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. So, with that being said, I just want to wish you all peace and shalom until the next time.